handyman coming back. Got a different kind of a topic today. We were on the forum the other day and somebody said, you know, when you think about it, we live in a mechanical world and there's always things around the house and projects and stuff that we have and we always need tools to repair them. So probably every household has some tools or some kind of tools that they've picked up over time that they use for projects. So without being in the trades or anything like that, it was like a little fun Jeopardy game. We called it the lightning round. And everybody had, I think it was 24 hours to come up with a list of tools that they thought was a must have for any homeowner to use for projects and stuff like that. And you couldn't go more than 50. And some people did more, some people did less. And then they put, I didn't do it, but somebody put a priority on them and ranked the top 50. So I thought it'd be kind of fun video just to share it. And I'll change the background here because I'm still playing with my software package as we go through the 50, just to add a little bit of difference to the video. So, okay, here we go. Let's start with uh, the top of the list. Give me one sec and I'll... The other, the other thing about it was you had to give a reason why you picked that tool. So I'll race down the 50. I thought it was an interesting thing just to look at. And okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to go down the list, but they're not in order of priority. It's just random, okay? But they were the top 50 that was picked. The first one's a sledgehammer, and uh, they said get an 8 to 10 pound one, not the heavier ones. They're too hard to swing, but they come in real handy for knocking things apart and busting up things like concrete and stuff like that. Number two was a center punch. You can start holes for drilling, and you can mark on steel with them. Number three, a putty knife, but make sure it's high carbon. And you can also use plastic putty knives. They're good for non-scuff applications. Okay, number four, safety glasses. Well, that should be your first priority anyway, but I'll tell you about safety glasses. I buy high impact. You don't buy the other basic impact. You want to buy high impact ones. Anyway, five, adjustable wrenches. They make a, they're used for a wide variety of nuts and bolts with a single tool. So, okay, that sounds reasonable. Six, pipe wrench. Best for holding pipe. They're rigid, they're heavy, bites into round surfaces, and get the ones that are made out of cast iron. I wouldn't buy the ones out of steel. The ones that I have are cast iron. Anyway, socket wrench set. Um, in discussing your variety, they say half inch is the best one to go with. They're the, the king of the kingdom or something like that of sockets to buy, and they're the best for any kind of light duty work. And you can use them on small appliances, electronics, etc. Okay, that sounds good. Metal file for precision fitting. Okay. Um, combination square, versatile and accurate for measuring and marking corners. All right, that's a good one too. A set of combination wrenches where it's boxed on one end and open on the other. Yeah, he made a comment what they were like once long ago. Now they've become uh, made out of better steel. They're thinner and sleeker looking, but... These would be handy just to have around the house for any type of wrenching activities. Okay, that's fine. Uh, he made a note here that he, the old wrenches, he's got a set of them, I guess. The new ones nowadays weigh about half of what they did in the 1920s. I don't think I got any wrenches from the 1920s, but uh, okay, I'll believe you on that. Number 11, a good circular saw. Okay, and he's also put on here a good chainsaw. Well, those, okay, those are two different things, but I'll, we might mention chainsaw later on, but I'll throw it in as 11. Number 12, a jigsaw for cutting curves in wood and metal and plastic. Okay, yeah, I agree with you there. Coping saw for making intricate cuts, C-shaped, and of course, remember when you choose the blade, the more teeth, the finer. The fewer teeth, the faster you'll cut, but the rougher the cut will be. And 15 TPI, that's teeth per inch, is a general use blade. Okay, that's nice. That's good information. Thank you for uh, submitting that one. 14, side cutting pliers. Heavy side cutting pliers, also called electrician's pliers, because they've got really sharp jaws and really strong shearing power, and the teeth on them, if you get a good pair, will really grip and hold things. Okay, sounds good. They uh, are indispensable for cutting cable and pulling wire. Like if you've got fish tape in a conduit and you want to grab a hold of it and pull it through the conduit, it provides high leverage. And actually, uh, if you get a really good pair of these electrician pliers, they can cut through a nail. And I've seen a friend of mine do it. It's impressive to watch. All right. Anyway, 15, hacksaw. Really fine teeth. It cuts through iron, steel, hard plastic, and any kind of thick cabling. 
carbon steel uh, regarding the hacksaw carbon steel is used the most 14 18 24 or 32 tpi yeah uh, the best way to go is to get a bimetal blade as it cuts through everything okay yeah i agree with you that sounds pretty good and good information 16 um going back to the saw we talked about both circular and chainsaws so we'll call 11 circular and we'll call 16 a chainsaw because it can really rough cut through anything you're doing like remodeling in houses it'll cut through two by fours it'll trim your trees it'll cut up logs for firewood so there's lots of good uses yes agreed with that 17 a good set of aviation snips i consider them one tool okay for sheet metal, copper, aluminum, rubber, and any heavy super cardboard or thick plastic, they're always marked right, left, and, you know, the straights, which is usually red, yellow, and green. Yes, I agree. Good choice. 18. Round nose shovel. That, well, yeah, we all need a shovel. I agree with that. Doug kit to dig, to cut, and to pry at things. Okay. 19. Needle nose pliers. Fishing out dropped screws and nuts when I'm working on my car. And things that are in tight places to hold them or pull them up out of there. Or they're good for bending wire when you're working on electrical switches and outlets. I agree. I use them all the time for that exact same reason. Choice. Cordless drill. A portable one that's got a clutch on it and uh, 20 volt. Okay, well, I don't know so much about the 20 volt, but a cordless drill would be a damn good choice. I agree with you. Drill bits to go with it. Number 21. Make sure they're made out of high-speed steel and by twist drill bits. And the twist drill bits come in sets. He's trying to say that you can use on concrete bricks and things like that. But a drill bit set in general, I agree, is a damn good choice, you know, in the 50, uh, in the 50 tools to pick. Vice grips. Good pair of powerful gripping action. I think what he meant is they're good for gripping things. Number 22 are vice grips because they provide a powerful grip on things. Yeah, I agree. Number 23, get a level. Nine inch one should do. A torpedo level is perfect for small jobs. A two foot one if you're doing construction work. I know that when I built my patio, I used one that was two feet for larger projects. 24, hacksaw. No explanation, but okay, I agree. Spray lubrication. There's lots of good ones on the market. Liquid wrench and the iconic WD-40. And actually WD-40... Well, the WD is for water displacement. 40 is because the guy that invented it found it on the 40th try that the formula worked. That's why it's called WD-40. Uh, yeah, his name was Norman Larson. Yeah, because I looked it up. So, yeah. He took 40 tries to formulate it. And what he was looking for is something that stopped metal corrosion by displacing water. Okay, then goes on to say WD-40 will remove adhesive, clean parts, stop squeaks, loosen rusty bolts. I agree. 26, Allen wrench set because you never know when you're going to run into those type of bolts. 27, tape measure. 25 foot, pretty standard. Uh, it'll handle most anything around your house and small jobs. The spring-loaded kind, self-retracting, of course. Hammer. Uh, get a 28, get a good hammer. Actually, a hammer dates back to 30,000 BC when they used a rock attached to a stick. Fast forward to today and the wood handle remains like it did way back then, including framing hammers. It's interesting. Yeah, good information. Nice to know that. 29, a good dust mask, disposable cartridge filters, and the type that are P100 because they remove lead dust and fine particles. Okay, that's good to know, P100. All right. Uh, nail set for countersinking nail heads without damaging the wood or anything around it. You can usually get standard sets of four, one thirty second, one sixteenth, three thirty second, and one eighth so that you have all the correct sizes that um, are available. Okay, all right, I got that. Vice. Get one with a swivel base, a good one. For securing work, buy a heavy-duty one that's made out of forged steel or cast iron. Stay away from the cheaply made ones. They won't hold up to moderate pounding. So the older vices are actually better if you can come across them. Yes, I agree with that. I've got a Chicago Morgan. I've got two of them, um, but I actually, there's still companies out there where you can buy the jaws. So yeah, my son gave me the Chicago Morgan and I put brand new jaws on it. It's not cheap, but it's an outstanding vice. Number 32, a good wood chisel. Actually, the, uh, the remark here is you can always tell a real antique because pre-1880s, there wasn't any sandpaper in existence. People had to use incredibly sharp wood chisels to put the, you know, the final finish on wood before they actually applied anything over the top of it as a sealer. Interesting. 33, chalk line. Straight line 
Oh, for providing you a straight line when you're wanting to rip something long in terms of boards, plates, concrete, or you're framing a wall. Yeah, that would work. 34, hearing protection. Yeah, we have a lot of noisy things that we use in our garages and our shops. I can see that. They even come nowadays with Bluetooth. Oh, you know, I've got one. It actually works pretty good. Um, 35, flashlight. Emergency power outages. Hey, well, when it's got a magnet, you can stick it on things while you're working. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, make sure they're LED. Yeah, nowadays those are incredibly bright. I agree with you on the LED. Look for ones that are industrial flashlight and they're rated for falls up to 25 feet. Okay, well now you're talking about some really heavy duty flashlights. Um, okay, I see what you're saying. I see where you're going with it in case of emergencies or power outages. Okay. 36. Somebody suggested getting a rake to clean up your messes around the house. Okay. 37. Uh, voltage meter. Besides measuring voltage, you can measure resistance. Well, ohms are resistance. And it also measures current flow. You get one that can measure all three, including the amperage. Um, most of them will emit a tone or a signal when you know you have a complete circuit. That indicates conductivity. That's a good choice. You got a good reason there. 38, cold chisel to cut through bolts, rivets, pins, and things that are real thick. Number 39, ball peen hammer. Um, the dome works good on curved sheet metal surfaces. For ball peens come anywhere from 40 to 50 ounce. Okay. Big large ones are usually and mainly used by blacksmiths. Around the house, 16 ounce is the most common. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know 16 was. I've got a few ball peen hammers here and I use them for pounding on sheet metal. Yeah, I can see that choice. Okay, let me move on. All right, instead of a screwdriver, a multi-bit screwdriver set. Compact, convenient, and it's a good alternative with interchangeable tips rather than fishing around in a drawer for an exact specific screwdriver. Okay, got that. It's a good choice. 41. A pry bar for pulling things apart like lumber, etc. 18 inches considered light duty. 36 inches considered a pry bar for big stuff. All right. 42. Utility knife to cut through drywall, cut through string, open up packages, cut duct tape, sharpen carpenter pencils, and keep extra blades in storage along with the knife. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Utility knife would be good to have. 43. Square nose shovel. Well, we already talked about shovels, but they uh, wanted to throw in a square nose one. Ideal for scooping up debris. Helps to pop drywall off walls, but get one that's got a long, flat blade. Okay, well, shovel's always handy around a house, so I, I'll go with that. 44, channel locks. The tongue and groove kind for, uh, they're good for mechanics, farmers, plumbers, and just the average person. Yeah, I've got a few pair of channel locks. They've come in handy for a lot of things in gripping and gripping power. Okay, an extension ladder, number 45. You make them 16 to 40 feet. Seven, actually about seven feet should do it for any homeowner. I don't think you need anything longer than that. Step ladder. Step ladders are good for inside. You're painting or you're working on electrical lighting or ceiling fan or something. So yeah, step ladder would be a good choice. 47, rope. Yeah, um, rope comes in handy. So you can use it for a lot of things. I'll agree there. 48, extension cord. Um, yeah, but make sure, let me give you some advice. When you go to buy one, make sure that you at least have 14 gauge wire. I wouldn't buy any of this household cord stuff. I mean, it's crap bucks more get the good stuff get 14 gauge wire 14 gauge is rated at least for 15 amps actually even if you found one that was 12 gauge that's even better 14 amps would be you know minimum and uh you know consider the length when you're buying an extension cord how long do you think that you need and anyway i would make sure i got it with either 12 gauge wire or like i said 14 that's like the minimum anything else i wouldn't even consider you want good extension cords that can handle the amperage. Okay, so let's see what else. Why is it important? Because it ensures there's minimum voltage drop along the length and you're going to have a, little, a lot less electrical issues with both the tool and back at the panel. So 15 amp breaker, 15 gauge minimum. Um, that's my advice. Okay, let's move on. 49, toolbox. Yep, strongly agree with that that's a tool uh, i'd consider it a tool and yeah you definitely got to have one for all the other things that we talked about or if you decide to you know buy more so yeah toolbox is a damn good choice get a good one get the best one you can for the money i agree okay so what's number 50 number 50 i'm going to leave open drop a comment below and tell me what you think another tool is that you should add to that list of 50 let's see what you think okay that was it for the lightning round that concluded the top 50 or the 50 tools that people chose feel any differently like i said fill in the 50 blank for me drop it in the comment below tell me what you think okay 
I'll see you on the next video and I hope you folks have a good day. Don't forget to click subscribe if you enjoy watching the videos and I thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.